Hej everyone and welcome to another episode of Stitching Tales. I am Johanna Lundström. And I am Malena Jarpe. And in today's episode we're going to talk a little bit about what's been going on lately in our sewing business. Because we don't just share sewing tips, we also talk about the realities of running a sewing business. And some of the struggles and hopefully some of the triumphs as well. So Malena, what has been going on lately in your sewing business life? Uh, well, to be honest, not so much. Uh, I have had um, uh, freelance work um, that I've been focusing on now for, I mean, the last couple of months. Um, so basically, I had to pause everything with uh, my own business, almost everything. I have a, a project that I can't really reveal what it is yet, uh, that I, but I have been working on, uh, which you are helping we, me with as well. Um, so I've been working a little bit on that, um, and also. I have been working on a projector file on um, uh, for for the Malma team. So fingers crossed that one will be released uh, really soon. Uh, but besides that, I'm I'm listening to a lot of podcasts right now. So a lot of mental things are going on when I'm doing the freelance work. Like a lot of thinking is happening, but not so much actually. It's yeah, it's happening. It's nothing like I'm not producing anything at the moment. Uh, but how is it going uh, for you? Is it, is it better? Yeah, it's been like the opposite because I've I've had like a really intense work situation right now. I'm, I mean, I'm still doing my day job as normal, but I also have been super productive, especially with you two. Because um, for you who maybe haven't listened to all our episodes, um, we talked previously about the fact that when uh, I started to publish my our, our podcast videos on my YouTube channel, uh, I lost a lot of subscribers. I think maybe 500 subscribers over the two month period uh, when we posted um, uh, the pod over there. Because basically people are most interested in sewing tutorials. Some of you listened and that was wonderful and left some really nice comments. But for the most part, it didn't really align with the expectations. And I'm also trying to get to 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Uh, and so obviously losing subscribers is not the best <laughs> starting point for that. So that, but the good thing about that is, first of all, we have moved the podcast now to its own YouTube channel. It's called Stitching Tales Pod. The link is in the description section of this video. And uh, but the best thing was that it kind of made my competitive uh, brain start to work again. So that just forced me basically to start doing weekly vi videos for YouTube. So uh, when we're recording this uh, in the beginning of May, I published four four video tours once a week for a month, which is a pretty good streak. I haven't had that streak since in two, 2022, I think. So That's it was a great. while ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you, because last we spoke, uh, you were talking about three. Have you made another one now as well? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I recorded uh, uh, another one. Two, yeah, so I batch recorded uh, two uh, last weekend, and uh, so I'm so I'm going to edit. Uh, so another one is going to come out this weekend as well. So I think I'm going to do a five five video streak. Uh, oh, you're, so that you're was back. really, <laughs> yes, I'm back. But but the, the thing that is the drawback is the fact that uh, editing videos and recording videos are extremely time consuming. So I've been in my studio up until maybe ten to ten thirty in the evening. Um, which is not sustainable. <laughs> so, uh, so I think that realistically, I will be able to maybe um, publish videos for a bit now. Like I think maybe like I would think it is as a season. So this is a season where I'm going to put out a lot of video content for maybe eight weeks, maybe a couple of months, and then I might need to take a break, and then maybe do another push in in the fall. So I I, d I have I decided not to set myself up for like disappointment. So I'm just gonna try to see how long I can keep this uh, going, and then I have to take a break again. But the good news is that I've, I've gained lots and lots of new subscribers. I think uh, since I started publish the last month, I've 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 about gotten about thousand new subscribers. So That's great. so I'm I'm I am for. 4,500 subscribers away from my goal to reaching 100,000 subscribers. So if I keep this going, I'm going to get that silver play button, like a placket that you can hang on the wall before this year it's is actually over. actually like a physical placket? Yes, it's oh, true. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So, 
So if you see a lot of YouTubers, especially they they have this on the shelf in the background just to give them that extra Actually like behind you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So maybe <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely going to do an unboxing video, basically a slightly ironic unboxing video, I think. <laughs> if and when that happens <laughs> so yeah. Nice. yeah so I've, I've, mm, so I've been on a roll <laughs> in terms mm. of that yeah what uh, what are your latest uh, videos about then uh, so uh, my latest video I did one about uh, uh, how to sew uh, pants I shared like eight tips that you can use that are inspired by methods in the ready to wear or in the garment industry Uh, so I basically just dissecting one of my own pants that I've sewn and also shared some techniques from ready to wear. And then I lost uh, time. I did um, a video about how to sew jeans for beginners where I shared like some basic tips that are really good to be aware of when you're just starting out sewing jeans because most of my videos are a little bit more advanced. So I thought it was a good idea to just, okay, think about fabric choice, thread, uh, some like tips to make things easier if you're just starting out or maybe you've sewn one pair of jeans and had some disappointments so that's my uh that's my latest video and this video i'm gonna do now is about how to hem uh, knit fabrics on a sewing machine oh cool like the blind hem stitch and uh, those kind of things yep nice yep So I've done videos about that in the past as well, but you can always repurpose content and just give it a slightly different angle. Yeah, yeah, and of course you learn new things as well uh, along the way. So, I mean, it's always good to update uh, new, new tips and tricks. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, well, and what also are your, uh, uh, we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, because I was asking, I was going to ask you a question because, uh, as you say, you do have a, a secret project that hopefully we can share in a, in a, another episode. Um, but I think maybe you could say just uh, like something about what it is, at least not perhaps where it's going to end up or anything like that. But maybe you can share a little bit more. Yeah, um, no, it's going to be in woven fabric this time, um, so it's a little bit new. Uh, it's been a while since I did anything in woven. I have um, a pair of uh, kids' uh, uh, tunic and uh, trouser, the hummingbird tunic and trouser. Um, so, and I have been working a lot with woven also with my freelance work. But uh, you know, it's a different. It's a different how you sew, <laughs> basically. So just to, I'm working on the illustrations now and like how to figure out all those different steps and uh, yeah it's um, it's, uh, it's one of those like you know memory brain jogger like how to how to do things uh, it's quite good good exercise for your brain I feel <laughs> yeah because most of your sewing pads are made for knit fabrics so that's that's have been your like niche or niche yeah and I mean I'm most uh, like I have most experience with when it comes to knit fabrics so that, that's like my Uh, comfort zone um, so that's um, that's mu much more easier for me um, but you know it's nice to do other things as well and uh, yeah try to um, try to do a little bit different different things and also when it's like sometimes you also for yourself want to have those woven uh, garments so um, I And uh, when we do PDF patterns, you kind of have to like want it yourself. <laughs> you w want to have those samples. Yeah, I want to wear it. So uh, that's uh, that's a good um, how do you say uh, a good thing to strive at. Yeah, because then you know you you hit something right. Because when you feel like this is something I would love to wear yourself, it's it's a little bit hard. Because sometimes when you work on a sewing pattern, in in a way you can sort of fall out of love with it a little bit because it kind of gets so tiresome doing all the samples and the product development so for me sometimes uh, when I've done a sewing pattern for a bit I'm a little oh you know I, I'm like oh uh, and then then it's so nice when you kind of re-fall in love uh, with your own sewing pattern I think that's uh, like a really nice validation that you you hit the mark even though perhaps after you just released the pattern you might not feel like wearing it every day because you're so tired of being exposed to that particular <laughs> garment <laughs> yeah and I think that's uh, that's actually one of the biggest reasons why like I love to work with clothes I love to make patterns but I don't have the need to wear like 
like every single trend or anything. And I think that comes from exactly that, that uh, when I work, um, when I used to work at uh, H&M before, and uh, before a garment was, you know, in store uh, available and you were able to wear it, I had seen that sample like we had done maybe five samples of it. We had done the grading. We have had had so many discussions about it in meetings and everyone's opinions about it. So like you talk a lot about that garment and uh, you kind of get tired of it. And then it's like, okay, so now this trend is out in store and you can wear it. It's like, but we have seen that one for like forever. I don't want to wear it anymore. So that, that's yeah. uh, that's my uh, why I'm I like to blame it on that. That's why I'm not so fashionable. I've seen it too many times. <laughs> yeah, but that's really interesting because when you think a lot about uh, fashion designers, like famous fashion designers, they usually have this uniform, and they don't really dress very excessive themselves. Maybe they are wearing a, you know, like a polo shirt and a pair of pants or a turtleneck and very like basic stuff. They don't really have this excessive uh, dressing themselves so they save that creative energy for creation and then they just want to keep it you know clean for themselves to just free themselves of all these kind of impressions and things that will happen when you're designing so i can i can totally understand that yeah. you don't have to be a, a total clothes horse yourself no exactly but the, usually and luckily um when you see pictures of like the real like photo shoot sample uh, uh, photos uh, when it comes online and uh, stuff like that, then you kind of fall in love with the garment again because it looks so nice in the pictures. So, so that's a good thing at least. That then it's like, oh right, it was pretty, you know. <laughs> I still don't need to yeah, wear it, but I know, now I really... like it again. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can totally get that. It's just you, you, you. I think there's always a curve in the creative process where you can initially you are very excited about the project. And then you kind of get this like low point where you sort of feel sick of it. And then you can sort of see it with fresh eyes once you finished it. And that's kind of where you kind of re fall in love with something. It's interesting because I think a lot of creative uh, cycles are very similar regardless of what type of uh, medium you're working in. Uh, I should also say if you're watching the video version of this, uh, you will see a person in the background in my video. That's Oscar, which is my studio mate and also the photographer of uh, the cover of our book fit for knits as well so I'm, i have a studio uh where, which i share with a fellow creative so we talk a lot about this kind of creative process even though he's a writer and a photographer so it's a uh, so he's a little bit of um doing a cameo in this the video version of this uh, pod it's not your new assistant <laughs> unfortunately not i wish i wish <laughs> That would be so nice, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, one thing I uh, had. Yeah, sorry. I, I want to um, name of the pattern. I always struggle with the uh, names. Um, this is it's going to be a dress, uh, and I was thinking to have uh, to call it uh, Nipita dress. Do you have any mm. thoughts on that? Nipita, is that a, that's the word? Yeah. Yeah, Nipita. It's a, mm. it's a flower. Um, it's called Nepeta in Swedish, Kant Nepeta. Uh, I think mm. it's pronounced Nepeta then, just mm. Englishification it. <laughs> yeah. um, so the m most like annoying part when you uh, name a pattern is that you have to find the hashtag for it that is not like taken. So I, I've tried uh, Nepeta dress, Nepeta top, Nepeta blouse. There's nothing there on Instagram. So I was like, yes, then <laughs> good enough for me. Um, so I'm thinking about that and uh, I've actually googled what Nipita is uh, like in English I is it like the proper English name and it's like yes Nipita something something don't remember also called catnip so so it's actually a catnip uh, flower that's like the most more common name um, and which like mm. fine I think Nipita still works as uh, as a name the only issue like this is a personal issue I've grown a lot of Nipita flowers now that I will have in my garden this uh, summer which is uh, and reason why is like well they grew I planted seed and they grew so okay sweet then I'll just continue growing those flowers so now I'm re really scared like am I gonna be the crazy cat lady who doesn't have fifteen <laughs> cats but is like luring everyone's cats in to my apparently catnip I didn't know it was catnip 
I have no idea this is catnip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's catnip. I, yeah, it's catnip. That's so interesting because I, I have a cat and uh, he loves his uh, catnips, but you it's usually dry. So I wonder if they will react the same way if you have fresh, uh, fresh leaves and fresh flowers because... Uh, yeah, because the cats I'm a little get. Scared uh, now. <laughs> yeah, because the cats can react quite differently. Some, you know, get like really happy and like a, like a high. Otherwise, get others get super playful. So you know, you're gonna have like a cat party in your garden, and that's yeah. that's the only thing. Whenever you see uh, this future pattern, all you will think about all those cats having a party <laughs> in your garden. <laughs> And don't get me wrong, so, I love you know, cats. I, I'm a cat person. <laughs> but like, they sound crazy, especially in the spring when they are like screaming at each other at night. Like being there myself, I've woken up by it uh, when we lived, I mean, back home. Um, and that sound is horrible. So I'm a little bit scared now to yeah. like the pattern, fine, name, no problem. But am I going to be... <laughs> Are we gonna one? We gonna be the one in the neighborhood who collects every cat and get them high in our garden? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna call the police on you. You know, you're, you're like distributing like uh, mind-altering substances to innocent creatures. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Um, I think this is a great follow-up for another episode. And also we would love to hear perhaps fellow gardeners if they've had issues with this particular to- topic, if they're fans of the Nip- Nipita plant. <laughs> or the yeah, cat because t- that's, uh, <laughs> that's a little bit like how I uh, grow things. It's like, okay, this works, then I'm all for that one. Then I yep. go all in. Unfortunately, that was catnip. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I honestly think that the the dry the dry leaves or or the plant that the ones that you get to get your cats uh, high, the, uh, it's uh, I think it's much more powerful. I, I sus- suspect that because it's just a, a fresh plant, it won't be as uh, a- attractive to the cats, and and also uh, they don't start they be- they become really like uh, relaxed, so they stop. Uh, Mewing, well, meowing. What do you say it in English when you right. meow, meow? Yeah, meowing. yeah. Because they yeah. get really relaxed and uh, like chill. Uh, I d- I've never heard my cat speak when he's high on on catnip. So All right. that's a way to silence the cats <laughs> rather than. <laughs> So they're just gonna be lazy cats all over in my, in my garden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more like it. <laughs> and it's but a, yeah, that, also that was good a side to know. Note. <laughs> Yeah, but I would like, speaking, you asked me about the name and I think it's a really nice name. And uh, I think the the context of this uh, pattern where it's going to be uh, seen later on, I think that that name works well in that context of the pattern. I definitely think it's really nice and also in line that because you use a lot of uh, like nature references for your pattern. So there's a... A, 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 like a consistency and a line mm. running through that, yeah. I think. So I think that's a really good idea. And uh, and as you mentioned, also we do have a struggle with with the f- thing that many of us in the sewing patterns try to do that we want to uh, uh, like have some nice names so we can have like a hashtag, like the uh, Nipita dress, for instance. And then you know names they 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 are not endless. So a lot of uh, people are having the same ideas about what the name of pattern. So that's something you, you have always have to do research on. <laughs> it's like, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's I spent, important like, because you have to, yeah. you know. <laughs> no, I spent hours like literally like typing in, okay, hashtag dunderlion dress. Nope, taken. Okay, hashtag tulip dress. Nope, taken. And I mean, I don't want to blame the knitters, but oh, there are so many knitting patterns out there that have taken the best hashtags. So, uh, so yeah, there are uh, the names are not uh, endless, unfortunately. But how are you? Because you are working on a no. new PDF uh, pattern uh, at the moment as well. W- what are your thought process behind your yeah. names? Yeah, it's, it's similar. I I use uh, names that has um, ancient, like a traditional uh, Scandinavian Nordic history, and but they shouldn't 
uh, use O, E, Ö, which are those uh, when we use um, dots above the H and the O, because that, that's going to be a nightmare. You know, for instance, the artist Björk, her name is Björk, but obviously you will see her called Björk, because, you know, not everyone gets that right. So, And I also have this struggle myself, because my last name is Lundström, which is, uh, you know, can be spelled in many different ways in other countries. So I try to do... Uh, avoid that and I don't want them to be too long so maybe five six uh, letters just for ease if you want to hashtag it <laughs> you don't have to type in too many letters uh, so actually I thought it would be fun because I put out a list now uh, pull up a list here of um, Nordic names it's going to be a pair of pants uh, so I'm going to read up a few and maybe you Malena can give me some feedback and also uh, you who are listening to this pod because obviously The way I work when it comes to sewing patterns, you know, when this episode is out, probably not much will ever happen (laughs) on the pattern side. So uh, we're going to see here now, uh, because I also like to use uh, a different letter. uh, So I don't have two pattern names starting with the same letter. uh, If I can avoid it, obviously, you know, eventually I will have that many pattern. But right now that has been also guide. So I don't have... um, I don't have uh, A, for instance. You A, yeah, I do Isla leggings, yeah. So I shouldn't do that. And B, I also have E. I have, but I don't have F. So let me see here. I'm gonna p- put some name up here on F. Uh, uh, Folka, <laughs> uh, Friedborg. I don't, I don't like any of these. Uh, and also, yeah. Uh, and let me see here. Uh, folke, faste, forste. No, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, um, let me see here. That's on. the tricky thing. Is like once, what, if you <laughs> say it in Swedish, it might sound nice. But then when you, I mean, mm. it has to work in English as well. Then it might be a little bit, a little bit trickier. Yeah. Yeah. So we have Sig, uh, uh, Signy, oh, sounds nice. Signy, because that's when you say it's Signy, we say, we say right. Signy, but it will be Signy yeah. in... Uh, yeah, um, yeah Signy, that was really nice. Signy, yeah, I like it, I like it, because I have the AV card in Signy, Signy, so, but I wonder if, if you say it's Signy, you will think yeah. more like a sign. Yeah. Um, Let me see here. Uh, 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 vide. 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 Uh, maybe. Um, halvar. Ha- halvar. Halvar. <laughs> halvar. Uh, ing. Uh, Ivar. Ivar. Ivor, um, it's 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 really hard because I don't feel like anyone is like really jumping out to me. Um, Tora, Tora, Tora. No, Tora. Yeah, because that's going to be the other, other connotation. You know, the um, the religious. Uh, uh, Aha, okay. Uh, Rikvi, yeah. Vida. Vide, maybe. Vide. That's nice. Huh? Wide. Vide. Yeah, v- vide. Because that doesn't really... It spells with a single V. And because the pants are a little bit um, um, wider. A little leg, bit wider, so. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, vide. Uh, vide. You know, I, oh, I'm kind you. of... Uh, yeah, it's gonna... It's not like... But then, of course, it's easy to overthink the name. So that's not what's going to like make or break the pattern if, if the name is uh, spot on. But I also have Aude. Aude. A-U-D-E. Um, I think I'm going to have to go to A as well here because it's so hard otherwise. Um, Alvar. Uh, Vide. Yeah, I'm thinking... Vi Frid. I want to have a mail. 
Vimar, Vile. Mm. Unusual you can in see well. <laughs> it, Yeah, yeah. Where are you taking, uh, do, you, do you have like a list of old names? So where, where are you taking Yeah, exactly. So this is Swedish, uh, just a Swedish uh, where you have this suggestions of how to name your kid uh, ah, using okay. like ancient uh, Nordic names. Ah, okay. uh, Birger, Bergvid, 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 Bure, Bure, Bure. I think that is so sweet uh, also now that uh, a lot of young <laughs> babies are named are like I have the same name as basically 90 year olds uh, grandmas and grandpas uh, my my yeah. neighbor's uh, kid is called Holge and he's like born in December so he's half a year now it's just like yeah. such sweet names yeah those are really really beautiful names and yeah I they're and they as you say they're very trendy right now but honestly I think I think Vida is probably the one I'm, I'm most prone to now because it's so easy to remember because there are some other names I really like Ivalde Ivalde as well but I think that's going to be hard to figure out how to spell it mm. um, yeah that's the thing you Halvar, want it to be like easily mm. easy spelling as well yeah yeah uh, and it's tricky because you also don't want it to be associated with something else like uh, I really mm. I love lupin flowers uh, things are so beautiful invasive sort you shouldn't plant mm. Uh, but uh, I've been thinking like using that as a name as well. I think it mm. was already taken. And then there is also lupin disease. So it's like, okay, but that's maybe not. Oh, a little bit y- yeah, right. Or is it called lu- lupus, right? I think it's lupus, not lupin, the disease. I think it's called lupus, but it's maybe too similar, maybe still. Yeah. I could be wrong. Uh, we're just like. Um, uh, you know, it's so much, uh, right. so much uh, taking considerations. When it's like, yeah, it can't be like in different languages. Like, uh, like mm. it has to work in several languages and uh, be kind of easy to pronounce for for everyone. And yeah, again, n- not too, not too long. Maybe uh, yeah, it's like Anne Fried is really nice. Uh, the one from ABBA. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I love that name. Fifty years ago, since they uh, won with uh, Waterloo. But, uh, but yeah, it's a little mm. bit lo- long as well. Mm. But uh, looking forward to yeah, hearing so so the uh, listeners. Yeah, so the Scandinavian name is called uh, Vile, which is while, which is while, which is <laughs> like an awful thing in, in English. <laughs> but it's good. It's like, Vile sounds really nice in Swedish. It's like resting. <laughs> while <laughs> sounds like a totally different. <laughs> yeah, I think my, like right now, I think uh, uh, Vide. It's nice because it kind of has this nice connotation in in, in Swedish as well. It's the um, mm. what is it called when the sprigs are uh, like when they have uh, starting to have leaves. You call this there's a vide, right? Uh, so mm. and vide wide, but it's with a single e. Yeah, I think people can understand that it, it should be pronounced vide. It's wide, vide. It sounds like you could figure it out in English as well. You don't have to say it wide. Wide video. Oh. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, if we'll you say see. wide, it it, it it works as well. Mm. Yeah, and it's short. Uh, Vide pants hashtag. Now then, yeah. it's just yeah, exactly. <laughs> then it's just a has- hashtag. Is it available or not? <laughs> yeah, stay tuned. I'm gonna after this we record this episode. I'm gonna hashtag uh, check do the hashtag check. So hopefully Actually, we both managed to name our next sewing <laughs> patterns on in this episode. Yeah, and I actually like an annoying part with, for example, Malava tea. Uh, well, Malava is a flower and you can make tea out of Malva as well. So then there are also a few pictures yeah. of where people are drinking tea. So it's like, fine. Well, okay, I can't live with that. It's not going to be like confusing which one is what. So it's like, yeah, yeah. That one I just had to accept. Yeah, yeah, because you still you have to make up uh, names in the end, then you know try to figure out. Because I think uh, the um, I I could be wrong, but we all know of IKEA, obviously a large Swedish furniture company, and they traditionally also use uh, Nordic-sounding names for most of their products. Uh, 
but the funny thing is that they they sound like they exist those words but they don't really exist most a few of them are like villages or cities in in sweden but a lot of those just sounds like they would be a swedish name or a swedish village but they have they just take two words together and join them so they sound like swedish sounding but they don't actually exist in our vocabulary or geographically so i think that's probably maybe the way to go <laughs> because then you will have <laughs> this uh, it's going to be easier to be unique yeah and i mean they have so many products so at the at a certain point there's like okay now we just need to make up words all the villages in the in sweden are taken already we just have to figure something else out yeah yeah i wonder if they're gonna stop eventually or have to like expand and use names that are outside you know the scandinavian like language circle Oh, because we we meant we talked about this offline as well. The fact that we do understand now why these bigger sewing pattern brands have like oh, this is pattern B eleven o two, like, and then we release eleven o three, and then it just goes on like that. So then you don't have the same issue that we are having because we try to find up cute names <laughs> <laughs> for a sewing pattern. Yeah, just a number just on take... it. It's uh, it's easier when you have like a lot, a lot of patterns. Uh, yeah, or just uh, just do the hashtag like best tea ever. So, <laughs> <laughs> everything is is top top notch tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's tricky. So it's you... tricky. <laughs> Yeah, because you always feel you because you uh, when when you're having a brand, you always you have this like vision for your brand. So that's why it might seem a little bit silly to to put so much thinking into the name because it doesn't really matter as much for the the end consumer. But for us, it's like we have we try to build this like wor- world around our brand. So we that's why we you know we. We don't. We want to have certain kind of names, and then we want to. We don't want to move too far away from that original name branding. So, so for instance, for me, I would never. I don't think I would use a common name. So I would never like name a pattern, maybe Helen or Mary or anything like that, like a, a non-Swedish common name, because then it would like. Then that that world would kind of not be uh, like consistent in in my head, obviously, because there's nothing wrong with those names, obviously. But I mean, it's just that th- that's where you want to like form certain uniqueness. At least you was you want to to feel to feel to, you want it to feel like it's a unique thing, even though of course it's not. <laughs> yeah, and it also I think it helps. At least for me, it helps if you are helps me being creative if I have uh, a framework like uh, as you said I have uh, my names are uh, well birds or flowers like uh, it's more nature uh, inspired um, so then uh, then I can okay then I'll focus on those those names and uh, can uh, um, it's easier for me to come up with <laughs> names then uh, than to just pick any any random um, like name, so uh, so for for me it's just easier. And to be honest, I have well, basically have my box with all my seeds that I'm growing, and I've just been flipping through them and it's like trying to hashtag this hashtag that. It's like nope, nope, nope. Okay, this one, yes. Then I'll take it. <laughs> so that's my yeah. that's my thought so. process. It's like, is it taken? Is it taken? No, no. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's how that's how we name uh, sewing <laughs> patterns. <laughs> I am I am just googling, and you are <laughs> browsing through your uh, seed collection. <laughs> exactly, and uh, we, m- we would love to have this beautiful story. Oh yeah, so this is my old uh, grandmother's uh, cat, or <laughs> like uh, that the person is that pattern is named after that person that was very special in my life but uh, uh, not quite I do have um, I should say of course my my girly top uh, which I'm by the way wearing if you're watching the uh, YouTube version of uh, the video version of this pod that's actually my the name of my mother's 
uh, cousin because I think girl is a really nice name and I always loved that name on her so and also the Avi Cardigan that's also someone based on a name in my family so I do have a few of those but it's not just it's more I would say the names that I like rather than it's like tied to a particular person that way um so yeah so it's not like you would love to have this like oh i remember when i i saw that uh, nipita i was so inspired to design the dress and the the shaping of the the flower kind of became like a starting point for my <laughs> design yeah no unfortunately not uh i i do like wanted to choose a blue flower um so that was mm. like my limitation like okay what what blue flowers can i uh, can i pick from um, but uh, but yeah no <laughs> available <laughs> hashtags that's basically what I'm <laughs> looking for. Welcome to this unique insight in how the creative process happens over here. <laughs> no, but I remember when I was that age, and we also have uh, names on our styles just because it's easier to like internal names, um, mm. just so we know which styles we are talking about. And it was always like the designers like okay what uh, should we call it this or that or usually well depend a little bit also on like okay so now we are watching this tv series everyone so now we can <laughs> name it uh, take these names from that uh, tv series and since it's not like public name or anything it doesn't it doesn't matter in that sense it's just that for for your own team to to know which which garment you are you're talking about but yeah it's a, it's a struggle for everyone to to come up with uh, with names yeah, 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 it's definitely, it's a, but it's also nice when you nail it because then it feels like it becomes like a, a total product because that's why giving it a name, give it some type of personality and you can just charge it with a, a, an emotion rather if you would just use uh, letters and numbers to, because it definitely, because you work so long with the pattern, it can kind of nice to have this, like it becomes a person of sorts in a way, right? Mm. Yeah, no, because. Your so, baby, basically. Yeah, it's for your baby. So hopefully, we'll. So your baby is going to be released sooner. At least you can perhaps speak about it. But it's going to take a while before you can actually get access to this. I think, right? It's it's, it's not something that will happen in in the. Uh, and my pants will be out this fall. So yeah, it's gonna. It's it's take, gonna take a little while as well, but it's it's good because now, now I have a name. Hopefully, maybe. But next time we do an update, I'll probably change it again. But I have to start because <laughs> I'm so I'm gonna format the pattern files here next week, so I'm definitely gonna <laughs> like uh, I have to f- to settle on a name. Um, I should also mention uh, speaking about our business because because uh, we talk a lot about marketing. We've done dedicated episodes also for. Um, uh, marketing and uh, I've done a really like strong effort now on uh, my email list because we talked about this in many episodes we've also done um, an episode on newsletter I know also you Malena you have also had done one f- addition right to your newsletter uh, yeah I made an automation so whenever you sign up to my newsletter uh, in a few days later you will get like a, a little welcome uh, mail uh, with a discount code and a little bit like presentation about me and uh, about our pods and uh, so so yeah it's, it feels so good when you do that kind of work and things would automatically happen when someone signs in so it's like not me physically have to do it every single time so that's, uh, that's really like it feels like you work in a smart way when you do things like that yeah, because it's a that's always a challenge because you have to you always feel like you have to produce unique content for every every type of channel w- that you're active on, and it's it's really overwhelming sometimes. So it's really nice to get those automations. And I should also say that uh, I have been uh, f- from apart from I've been posting videos, I've also post um, uh, to my email list almost weekly now, or at least every other week. I think for one and a half months, and I'm gonna say I've had the best sales months now for uh, two years so if you compare to the numbers wow. uh, last year um, I've doubled my sales in my Shopify store and that is in large part due to the fact that I've been much more consistent about sending out newsletter with you know sewing tips and so I don't really promote in that many uh, sewing in not many newsletters mostly just sharing tutorials and, and things that I think could be helpful but it's it's it really just reaffirmed the fact that it's so 
important to like not be afraid of uh, putting yourself out there and and it's so nice to actually see that the sales has been increasing lately because I I definitely had like a a bit of a down period I think after post uh, post pandemic I think a lot of us saw decreases in sales but yeah I'm I'm really slowly moving myself up again even though I haven't released a new sewing pattern uh, for uh, two years and that's also I should say I mean um, that all my sewing patterns are selling uh, better today than they did when they were released. I mean, obviously the release period, of course, is is different. But then, if you see month by month, I'm actually selling more more uh, sewing patterns of my latest two patterns now than I did uh, maybe a year ago. Okay, but that's uh, that's great. I mean, you mm-hmm. wanted to, you know, yep, uh, and not <laughs> just be the how do you say the news like oh something new and shiny and then it dies um, that's that's what you want to that it continues to, to sell that's, uh, yeah and i've yeah, been listening so to as i mentioned like i've been listening to a lot of uh, podcasts right now about uh, well business and mar- especially marketing and they talk a lot about um there are two especially podcasts that i um, Jenna Kutcher and um, Amy Porterfield that speaks a lot about the importance of uh, newsletters and have to have your uh, email list um, because uh, social media like Instagram it's social media like people go there to be in- entertained just scrolling through like they don't go there to buy things um, so to have your email list that's you know, people are more when you op- when you open an email list, like then you are maybe more in that mindset. Like, okay, what can I? W- what do they have for news for me today? While on social media, it's like you can be social with your uh, um, with your sewing friends in another way. So I think it was really like so interesting to hear them talk about it like that. Like those are two se- separate things, very much important both, but like don't mix them up and you don't have to like you can't only be on social media like how they really like talk a lot about the importance of to have uh, newsletters so um, so yeah I'm um, again I'm not doing a lot right now but I'm like I'm thinking <laughs> I'm thinking and planning and uh, like strategizing a lot in my in my mind at the moment <laughs> Yeah, I think that's also really good. I think I think you you mentioned a few podcasts there. I think Diana Kush is called the Gold Gold Diggers podcast, yeah, and Amy Portfield is a a pro, prominent uh, like uh, online educator. She also sells, you know, I think courses in how to build your own course and stuff like that. So these are two like very prolific uh, American um, podcasters that talk a lot about this stuff, and I think. Even though maybe you you don't can't relate to everything they say, I think sometimes listening to these kind of like big ideas uh, podcasts is very helpful because I think as we have talked about previously as well, I mean we have some mental hurdles around marketing, and uh, listening to to people like that who's very like um, like invested in marketing and really like big ideas and everything like that. I, I I've also listened to these podcasts as well uh, for, from time to time. Uh, and I find them extremely helpful because they they really and they also have the numbers to show. Obviously, I mean, I guess when they release products, they use the email list first and foremost. They are not using social media because they create relationships on social media, and then the marketing is done via email and maybe live streams or webinars and what they call it. Uh, so it's really interesting to me. I find it fascinating to um, to go outside our sewing community and listen to people that are uh, doing businesses in other online forums and digital businesses because then I find for me it's easier to get new ideas rather than just look I think we both maybe look at some some sewing brands that are extremely successful on Instagram and then we feel like almost defeated because we don't see how we could get anywhere close to their numbers or engagement rate and interactions Uh, but maybe as I've talked a lot about, I think uh, too many sewing companies are doing putting too much effort on Instagram. That's my I will. That's the sword I will die on. <laughs> and I know some are doing amazing on Instagram, but I um, I am not. Uh, I think too many 
are putting too much effort in in creating you know content for instagram instead of doing email marketing and uh, you know providing long form content that is easy to search and things like that so they can live on for for many years to come uh so that's my i i still believe this to the to this day even though of course i know many sewing patterns that has become huge thanks to instagram for sure but long run i do not believe that should be your only marketing platform or your main even not even maybe not even your main marketing platform honestly um what do you no, think again, about that like uh, mm. as they say like that's the place to be social hmm. it's to connect with your followers connect with your um with people um and uh, to to share snippets of your daily daily life or like sewing uh life more or less um but hmm. yeah as you say that if you want to do tutorials then a blog is a lot better or uh youtube is a lot better because you can like in depth show really like talk about something and uh, it's so much easier to search um and they talk a lot about uh, in these podcasts as well uh, about uh, pinterest and how uh, how you can do like really quickly do things on pinterest that can gain a lot of um, uh, traffic to your uh, to your website and then to your newsletter um so that are also like because pinterest is basically a search engine that's not a social uh, social place to be it's a search engine that uh, guides people towards your website for example um so i'm really like trying like i'm going to shift more focus definitely on my mailing list and uh, on pinterest um, instead in the future when i'm not working in freelance work <laughs> right now i'm just <laughs> you know, yeah. lots of plans and no time <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it is, that's probably I'm also not, I'm not the, the uh, like I'm, uh, running theme <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm like super grateful about these freelance work. I love doing them. Uh but you know when you want to do everything all at once. But the good thing is that this gives also me really time to uh, to think about stuff and to mm. really like, you know, have them marinate uh, and to really when I'm actually going to do them then I know exactly what to do and I can focus on the hopefully right thing and just get it done. Uh, because otherwise it's a lot of you know guessing like what to do how to do it and uh, i have that time to think now and that developing process basically i've i've done it so it's just doing it um when i get when i uh, get time and i will have time in the future i know that um so i'm just like it's just a matter of timing basically yeah yeah because we as we talk about we can't do it all all the time it's just that you know sometimes when you get this great momentum you have to the rest of the life will get in the way of like realizing all those big ideas so it's a constant struggle but i think as as i said some other time you often underestimate what you can do in a short amount of time uh you overestimate and then you underestimate uh what you can achieve in a year or two years so you're always making these uh like movements forward it's just that we don't really see it in the moment because we always fe- think about the stuff we haven't done uh rather than actually thinking about all the things that we have achieved and so that's why it's also interesting to talk about this on the pod because you can i think you're going to re- get a really like insight into realities of trying to you know figure out this <laughs> sewing business thing and i think just just the fact that we are talking about on the pod i f- feel helps me also like brainstorm ideas and we keep ourselves accountable um and hopefully if you're listening and if you're ha- running your own business or thinking about starting your own business regardless of the area i think hopefully you will f- also be like uh, comforted to hear that we are <laughs> also trying to figure out stuff along the way and hopefully you get some ideas as well that you can use for your own business in the future <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> but what are uh, what do you have in the uh, pipeline now for the next couple of weeks yeah so uh because the the like the um, the running theme is when will Johanna film her jeans course because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was actually I was actually planning to do this uh, but then I have to go uh, I had to switch day or so my day job and then my studio mate Oscar was also here so I just had to postpone it but now we just had a discussion here before so I'm gonna uh, film it in June instead after the midsummer eve because then I have a, a, a few days to myself in the studio because this this is gonna be a mess I'm gonna be a mess and the studio is <laughs> gonna be a mess 
but uh, everything is like f- figured out and sorted out so I'm gonna do that uh, so now my plan is of course to keep doing youtube videos and also like really getting started with my sewing pattern because that i feel a little bit frustrated about that i haven't gone gone farther but i always find it for me it's easier to to like block several cons, cons, uh, continuous days for a project because if i go back and forth then i forget how to do things and then it's such a long uh starting uh, like line before i can get up to speed again so my hope is that I can devote uh, several days now in in the next upcoming weeks where I can just like, bury myself into this and just do as much as I possibly can. So I want to have that pattern like done and ready before summer. Uh, and then Oscar is going to help me take the photos for the uh, the patterns and everything. So I need to sort of sample. So. I, I, I just hope that I don't have to do another episode where I talk about you know doing doing my patent and, or and filming my jeans course. <laughs> yeah, but I mean compared to what you like to write a book, yeah, that takes years, uh, and then you do a lot of writing and illustrations. So to do a PDF pattern, that should be like you know you can do that really quickly if you really like just laser focus on that yeah it, it's true it's true just it's very very true i think it's with a lot of things you just that little hurdle to get started then it's going to sort itself out so hopefully if you listen to the podcast uh, uh we're not going to do another episode in four weeks and i haven't done anything on the pattern that's going to be <laughs> embarrassing so i need to get my stuff together <laughs> what on what stage are you in now with, with the pattern uh, i am at stage zero still <laughs> i mean I've gotten the files from you. I've I've also ordered all the fabrics for the samples, and uh, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, then you got a lot of good things uh, because I mean, you have a lot of good things to look forward to because you love sewing instructions and like yeah. writing them and making all the illustrations. Start with that then, because you're good at it. That that was just then it's so much easier to just you know get going. And then uh, do the actual pattern. You can do that later. But start with the things that you love the most, and then it will just be easier to continue with the other things. Yeah, thank you. You're you're so right. That's very true because I do feel that's that feels more natural for me because formatting the uh, the pattern files, it, though it's not difficult. When when I haven't done it in two years, there's a certain routine that you have to like build up to make the workflow smooth. And I feel that's why I'm the most hesitant now because I'm like, oh, where do I start? How do I do layers the smartest way and everything like that? Uh, and maybe I will also definitely follow your examples and do a projector file as well uh, once I get to that. But that we're going to talk about in another episode because I'm really, really excited now to hear that you actually bit the bullet and did the projector file. So it's going to be really interesting to talk about more about that in, in a future episode as well. And perhaps uh, we should have some guests on maybe that have also done this because it's going to be like an interesting thing. Because we, we really, both you and I realized that this is much bigger than we thought it was. And and we also was thinking maybe we should also get our own projectors because it sounds like a really brilliant way of doing stuff. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's so convenient to not have to print out a pattern. I uh, mm. I actually have a quite big uh, plotter, like a big printer that uh, prints out like 60 centimeters wide uh, paper, like it's on a roll. So I, I don't luckily have to print out A4 pl- or letter sized paper and uh, tape them all together to try out my patterns. But uh, still, it would be nice to just have to uh, avoid that as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's an d- interesting development. So stay tuned. We're going to have more to talk about that in the future. But I think we're going to round up this episode for today. I hope you enjoyed this update. And as you say, we're also going to remember to post on our Instagram, uh, Stitching Tales Pod. We g- I think we're going to have a picture of your plant, maybe the catnip, maybe <laughs> so they can see the inspiration behind everything. Yeah, and I can, so uh, I can take I a can picture also of that. Post <laughs> a, I, and I can also post a picture of my cat when he is yeah. enjoying his catnip as well. Because uh, that's, that's a very happy cat. <laughs> yeah, so I can see what I have to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for listening and watching. My name is Jana Lundström. And I am Malena Jarpe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.